Today we'll be talking about the top five things coming in the FL Studio 21 update later on this year. So whenever there's a new update in FL Studio, everyone gets so excited about a brand new plugin. Like when the Flex VSD was announced as a new stock plugin in a previous update, or the Frequency Splitter FX plugin. They were really big topics when they first came out. Not even that important. The absolute best things you can add to a DAW are features. Features inside of your music program that streamline your workflow and make things 10 times easier. That's why keyboard shortcuts are such a huge thing because it really helps streamline your workflow. And in this new update, Features are exactly what we're getting. And a quick shout out to my best friend Jacob from Sauceware. I wanted to make this video, but I had no idea how to download the beta. And I've been seeing Jacob's posts on like Instagram and YouTube, so I thought, why not just hit him up and see how he did it? And he was kind enough to send me that link, so a huge shout out to my best friend Jacob. So if you do end up liking this video, I ask you to please drop a like for me down below and subscribe for more future content. Now let's get in this top five list. Starting at number five, we've got the brand new multi band delay plugin. I know that I literally just said that I was more excited about features, but this needs to be mentioned and is actually a very powerful and really useful tool. So let's get a small taste of that right now. So let me drag over this melody loop right here, but let's go and put that onto a mixer channel very quickly. Whoa, it crashed. Like I did mention, I'm only using the beta right now, so there are going to be some bugs here and there that should not be in the final version. Now putting on the brand new multi-delay stock plugin, and here's the default preset. Turn it off, back on, not a huge difference here. We're going to stick to this one right here, this four bar loop. This one you can clearly tell a big difference, turning it off. Sounds way more mono, and then this one really separates everything. With the delay, everything sounds like it's like a lot wider. But presets is not where this ends. You can actually go over here and draw different things in and get really unique, different sounds. Like this is absolutely crazy. And then also different volumes if you wanted to also. And then also different panning. And there's a lot more to go through over here. So over here, if I do this one, it's like a wave, you know, everything moves along together. But then if I go over here into the pencil mode, it won't do that. You can go however much that you like. So if you want this one to just be on the top end like this, and then like that before, you can definitely do that. everything a lot more separated and then also the panning over here so generally i like my my low end to be pretty pretty mono and in the middle but for everything else you can do maybe like to the left over here and then the right up here and then also the main thing over here gentle i don't like gentle whenever i do these sort of effects i like it to be very in your face so i'm gonna go over to steep and that's going to instantly make it even more separated. It's going to be an even more intense effect. But you can actually see the individual frequencies for each band over here. This one's very full, and then it doesn't have a whole lot of high end because it's a very dark sort of melody loop. So you can even see the high end is kind of just very thin over here. So a lot of the effects are going to be in the mid tones and the low range over here. But you can definitely see that visual representation of what you're, you're doing to each each uh, track. And then also you've got linear phase over here too, which is going to be a mixture of both. See, this is a really good way to like really tell the difference between between gentle and steep. So here you can kind of just hear the midtones more, but here it's very much just going to be the low end. So already you can tell how this plugin is going to be a major game changer for a lot of people out there. And I cannot wait for you guys to give it a try. But now we're moving on to number four on this list, which is going to be great news for any Apple users out there. Like me, I'm an Apple user. We can finally use M4A files inside of FL Studio. For those of you that don't know what that is, M4A files is what your iPhone uses for the voice memos. So obviously this is going to be a very big change for a lot of people. And honestly, I could have put this at the very top of my list for some of you, and here's why. So let me do something really quickly. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and do a voice memo real quick. Now I can go easily go over here because I'm using a iPhone to a Mac. I can just go over here, put it to my Mac Studio. So now we are back on the normal FL Studio. This is no longer the beta. .m4a file. Can't do it. Can't put it in there. So it's confirmed that yes, this beta and the new update is going to have the integration to be able to use the M4A files inside of FL Studio now. So once you have your voice memo all in here, you can go in and um, change it and make it sound a lot better because uh, you have a terrible take and you're not a singer. And there's no shot, I'm gonna let you guys hear this without any effects on it. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. Put a little bit of an EQ on that. No, not Portal, God damn it! this one crashes it. Fuck! So that wasn't even the beta's fault. That was just the fact that Portal just always crashes my computer now and I can never use it ever again. You know what? 
that's fine, you get the point. I am deleting this and never thinking about it ever again. So whenever you're out and about without your computer and an idea magically just pops into your head, you can use your voice memos to record it and put it inside of your beat if you do choose to do so, which you're probably a much better singer than I am. All right, now moving on to the features that I was talking so much about that I'm so excited for. We've been asking for a lot of these changes for a while now and we're finally getting them. Sitting here at number three is going to be the ability to draw automation without making an automation clip. All right, so say for example here, I want this right here to be the intro and then my verse will start like right here, the hook will start like right here, whatever, right? But I wanna fade in the melody before we get into the hook. Before what you would have to do is go over here and hit automate volume, right? That's what we'd always do, create an automation clip. Not anymore. All we have to do now is go to the new button over here, show fade editing controls. Click that and immediately you will see the nodes pop up over here, which all you gotta do is go like that. And you can actually see a an actual representation in the audio file, which is really, really cool. And we don't have a bunch of automation clips cluttering up our project file. And of course you can change how the curve is going to be like that. Make it even more dramatic like this. And then even a gain knob so you can really boost that signal. And say for example, you really messed this up. Like it's over here, like you don't know where everything is anymore. You're, you know, boosted to high hell or you're just done with it. All you have to do is go over here and hit reset fades and you're back to normal. So it's no harm, no foul. That is one thing we've been asking for for a very long time. Other programs like Ableton have already been able to do this for a long time now. So it's great that we're now finally getting that addition because it's very easy for automation clips to stack up and clutter a project file. Because in some cases I only want to use it one time. So why would I create a whole automation clip cluttering up my file when now you can just draw it in like this? Right, so that was a pretty quick one, although very important but now we're moving on to number two. And that is going to be auto cross fades when connecting two different audio files. For example, right, here's our first melody that we've been using. And now I'm gonna go grab this one right here. Where right now, everything is the same. If I have it like this, it'll just be like normal playing two different audio files at the same time. Okay, great. But now when I move it up, you can clearly see if the audio file has changed once again, fading in. Which you don't need to do this, but you can see it done more naturally by going from the side and then you can definitely see it going now. And let's do a quick little drum pattern real quick. I, I got these together real, really fast. The only thing that I will mention though, because there's a tail end over here, it will cross fade with that one again, even though there is no sound over here. So you've got to be careful with things like that. All right, so let's hear the first eight bars going into the actual verse over here. So right here is going to be normal and then we're going to have the fade in of the next melody loop right here. It's a highlight right there. This feature is going to make it a lot easier to add diversity in your tracks. Even if you're just pulling in some random ass melody loop to put for a bridge or an intro, it's going to make for a more interesting transition here. Because it's so easy, you can drag in any melody loop, put it in there, crossfade it with your already existing melody loop, and make the drop hit that much harder. Which because it's so easy to do, you're more liable to do it. When something is a huge process and takes a long time, some days you might just get lazy or you just don't want to go through the entire process and you might not end up doing it at all. So this is going to be a very fast way to fix that problem. But that's not the extent of all that we can do. Going back over here and turning on show fade editing controls again, that new button, we now see how they're going to be crossfading together. But you can change over here, and you can also see the audio file changing as well, right? So you can really dial in what you want. And then you can also change them individually as well, going over here and then doing something more like that. This one's now separated, turn it up like that, and then create a better curve that you like. So good, so good. But not only that, there's a special tool that I always use whenever I need a quick riser. So I pull on this crash real quick, cut out the transient actually, and now using the new fade in and fade out controls, and including this one, we can turn up the gain to really fill it out, and then fade it in like this. A little bit less. Perfect, really good curve there. Or I can turn that back down like that again create any sort of curve that you like. Another really cool thing as far as sound design goes, right? I'm gonna bring this kick down over here. And then once I start fading it in, we'll now make room for our 808s with our kick. You just need to be sure to not have it completely stacked because once they're stacked, you can actually see it not fading in anymore. Once I pull it just slightly over to the right, you can see that fade start to come in again. And then you can change the curve how much you want. That's gonna make this very easy for sound design. If you're having troubles mixing your kick and your 808 together, automatically fading them together to get the perfect balance is going to be so crucial. All right, we are finally here. The number one thing that I think is going to be the biggest game changer in this update. And that's going to be all the new changes to the sample browser. So when I made my custom folder over here of all of my samples, I separated my kicks and my snares and my claps 
And then also I've got a completely separate folder over here of unfiltered stuff where it's just some random stuff lying around. Which yes, it's always good to be organized, but sometimes I want just drums that I know will be good for a certain genre. But they're all in different folders. Let's make this a lot faster. Like say for example, if I want to make a trap beat. My favorite kick of all time is going to be this one down over here, magic, and then boom. Love that kick. And now honestly, I can just hit favorite. Done. That's now going to be over there. But favoriting it is now where it ends. You can go over here and hit tags and you've got a bunch of different options over here. Or you can go over here and even hit add tag where something is completely new. Now I want some go-to trap drum sounds in here. So I'm going to go and type in trap. So now whenever I just go over here and hit trap, there it is right there. So much easier. And you can add as many tags as you want. So I can hit add tag and then hit put kick. Right there, done. Now it's gonna be a kick one as well. And then you continue down the line of all the drums that you want, like your snare, your hi-hats, your open hats, your 808s, and then you can move on to making other tabs as well, like lo-fi, vaporwave, synthwave, just so you have your go-to sounds for the genre that you're trying to make currently. It's going to be a huge game changer when starting a new track. Because the old browser was starting to feel kind of clunky and unintuitive, this update just really changes all of that and makes everything so much better. So those are the top five things I think are really going to streamline your workflow and that I'm most excited about coming from this update. In the comments down below, I'm really interested in what you guys think is going to be the biggest game changer and which feature you're most excited for. And like I said before, you can also download this beta and give it a try for yourself. But that's all that I'm going to have for you guys here today. So thank you so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.